from all Utes over at the uh, Utah School. CFB Insider projects Utah to the Big Ten in next conference realignment wave. Now, there's been a number of suggestions on who's moving where, like whether Notre Dame might move into a conference or or whatnot. But this guy in particular, uh, Kevin Dorba at All Utes, believes that Utah is going to be the next one to move. So he says, Utah head coach Kyle Whittingham has been begrudgingly saying it for a while now, but college football seems to be heading to having just two super conferences contending for titles with each other. Yep. Now we looked at the realignment chart. And in fact, I have, let me, I'm going to jump ahead here. When we're talking about super conferences, the, uh, the big 10 has the most right now with 18 and the ACC has 17. The SEC and the big 12 have 16 apiece. But now apparently there's talk that the ACC is going to is is falling apart. Potentially? Yeah, there were rumors that Florida State and Clemson were going to go to the SEC. And then I think okay. some people were were kind of speculating that that may open the door for like Miami or I think Miami to come to the Big Ten. There was a rumor at one point that Florida State was looking at the Big Ten. I don't know. All right. Well, OK, so then if if the ACC falls apart obviously the pac 12 might no longer exist the big pac 12, 12 and the sec exist. <laughs> the pac 12 does. well uh, yeah i guess for all intents and purposes yeah yeah you've still got the big 12 i suppose if the big 10 and the sec start poaching teams from the big 12 and the acc then yeah now we're back to two super conferences the acc would almost need to i don't know i don't know how strong the big 12 conference is i mean yeah they're, well, they're, I guess Utah is in the big, they just moved to the big 12. Yeah. So if they move from the big 12 to the big 10 or no, yeah. To the big yeah, 10 to the big 10. Yeah. I don't know. I, hmm. I wonder, I, I don't know a lot about like conference financial states and stuff like that. I know the big 10 yeah. and the sec obviously have the two biggest like network contracts right now. Right. I don't really know what the Big 12 has because I don't really see a team in the Big 12 that people are like clamoring to watch. Baylor used to be good. <laughs> Arizona is, you know, had has had some some good seasons and stuff like that. Iowa State, like they always seem to get a lot of hype in the offseason and then they mm -hmm. just fall apart. I don't know. I feel like the Big Ten should probably start poaching teams from the Big 12. And then the ACC, I don't know what their situation is going to be like, but they could probably try and poach a few Big 12 teams too, just to keep the number of teams that they have like mm -hmm. in comparison with the Big Ten and SEC. And then maybe some of those financials, some of the money from those extra schools would help. And then you've got a three conference system or right. com whatever. Well, I'm just going to say this right now. With Jim Harbaugh gone to the NFL, the Big Ten needs... Deion Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be interesting. <laughs> I, yeah, okay, sure, okay. whatever. The article goes on, the Big Ten and the SEC have emerged as the two biggest powers in the sport. Okay, so that's true. The Big Ten and the SEC have the biggest, have, have the best teams, but as we just saw, the SEC does not have the biggest number of teams. So, and if they choose, can dismantle the entire college football infrastructure. That's kind of scary. Following the relatively new changes to the college football playoff, we are already discussing how to change the 12-team playoff, despite not even having witnessed the first one yet. <laughs> this is what gets me. I mean, th this is indicative of, of the chaos that's happening right now. From, from month to month, they're like, Let's let's do a 14 playoff. No, let's do 12. No, we'll do four. No, 12. How about 14? No, we'll go back to 12. No, you know what? Six. <laughs> I guess seven and a half. Let's do seven and a half teams in the playoffs. Well, some idiot on Twitter mentioned 32. <laughs> 32. Like, <laughs> I'm sure that was a joke, but please don't give them the idea. What is that? Like three more weeks? Well, These kids do have uh, school in the unit. Yeah, that would be another month. Yeah. Kids would be opting out of like the first two or three weeks of the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. The article goes on, regardless with ongoing issues, the ACC is having with its biggest brands wanting out, as you said, conference realignment is expected to happen again and soon. 
Andy Staples is over at on three. Oh yeah, Andy Staples on three. You know, oh yeah. I put it on the slide and I can't even read this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so Andy Staples there at on three made up this chart dividing the SEC and the Big Ten into four divisions of six teams each. So 24 teams per conference. So then we're up to 48 teams, uh, which gets us closer to what you were talking about, 50 to 60 teams. So Mm -hmm. if we have 48 teams between the SEC and the Big Ten, here's your AFC, NFC, all fighting for the national championship. Do it. And I was trying to... This is similar to what I was trying to work out, although I was thinking of it with all of the teams, uh, all 133 teams. I was trying to figure out a way to divide them up into north, south, east, and west, and then those into divisions, and then you get your winners from those divisions, and then you just cycle it down like they do in the NFL playoffs. Yeah. That would have been a lot more games, and probably, I hate to say it's not worth it, but then I guess even in basketball, they do the... the uh, the round of the 64. tournament oh, is 64, yeah. right? Yeah. They start mm-hmm. with 64 and work down from there. Um, but this chart is is interesting. You still have Michigan and Michigan State in the same division. You have where is Ohio State? Oh, there it is. They're Two in the, below Michigan. Yeah, one to below yeah. it there. Yeah. I think that this could be interesting, but I wouldn't want to see that. Actually, now that I think about it, um, and we got to get to Antoine's comment real quick because that was that's hilarious. Right. But um <laughs> before that, yeah. I actually, now that I think about it, I don't think that they should do divisions because like the NFL has divisions, obviously. And that's how you can have what, like a five and 12 team make the playoffs right. and have a shot at the Super Bowl. And I think that that's really dumb. Right. You don't have to win all the games. You just have to win the right game. Right. Yeah. And I, I think that that's really dumb. Like if Michigan is, is 12 and 0 and I don't know, Florida State is seven and five and they both make the playoffs well but that's the difference between the the professional layout and the college layout but let's just say like this so there's one two three four five six seven eight let's just pretend that this is this is two conferences with four divisions each so two conferences with a north south east west division let's just say that Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. so in the Big Ten's top division there to the top right, you've got Penn State, Florida State, et cetera, et cetera. Let's say Penn State plays 12 games a year. They've got mm-hmm. one, two, three, four, five games right there. Let's say that they have to play one of those or two of those teams twice. There's six and seven, and then they've got five out of division games. Let's say they play Michigan and Ohio State, and USC, and uh, uh, Oregon, and yada, yada, Notre Dame. I don't know if that was five. Penn State, in that, at that point, could theoretically go seven and five, and yet because they won their division, they'd be in the playoffs. Meanwhile, right. you've got Michigan. Uh, let's pretend that Michigan and Ohio State are in the same division, Um, because that division right there looks kind of (laughs) weak. But let's say Michigan plays Ohio State, Oregon, USC, Notre Dame, Washington, uh, Utah, Texas, yada, 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 and and wins all of those games, maybe even loses one or two. But they win their division because they beat Michigan State, Notre Dame, Indiana, Purdue, and Rutgers. Mm -hmm. They would also be in the playoffs. So I, I think that that's really crappy because Michigan Michigan has a much better record at that point. Michigan is clearly a better team than Penn State, and yet they're both rewarded with a playoff appearance. And so at that point, the regular season isn't doesn't mean as much, which is what they're already concerned about with the 14-team playoff or 12-team playoff is that at this point, there is a question as whether or not a 9-3 and three team could theoretically make the playoffs as long as they lost to the right three teams. And I think that that's really dumb. But yeah, no. you're right. They only have to win. So so each division, you only have to win those five games because if you win those five games and then lose the other seven, you've still won your division. Yeah, and I think that that's really dumb. But that's how it is in the NFL. Correct. And I think that that is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> well, what else do you do? I, in the NFL, there's there's 32 teams. They could do. They could figure out a ranking system of some kind. 
So if you had a ranking right. system, so let's say in in the bottom division there, let's say USC, Oregon, and Washington are all ranked in the top 10 or the top 12. Let's say we're talking about a 12-team playoff. If they're all ranked in the top 12, even though two of those teams lost their division, they would still have playoff spots. No, well, I, it, yeah, I, if you're saying the division, winning the division doesn't necessarily matter. If you looked at it, actually, okay, I think I understand what you could do is instead of having to win your division, you, you have to win your conference. Yeah, well, either that so, or just make it the top four of each conference. And and that's not that's not okay. division winners. That's, you know, you're going to have a 12 game schedule. Okay. And you're going to play right. whoever your schedule says that you have to play. Win those games. If you have a record that ends up in the top four, you are one of those better teams. I understand that people are going to say, well, you know, Michigan played a really weak non conference schedule or non divisional schedule, whatever. Right. Yeah, that's true. But I don't know. I, I think I would rather have the teams with the best records go into the playoffs rather than the teams that don't have a very good record, but won their division because the rest of their division was just that much worse. So I, I don't know. All I right. guess I've heard, I've heard the saying like Josh Pate says this sometimes where it's like uh, you are not your record. And to a point that right. might be true, like Nebraska, especially Nebraska under Scott Frost always felt like they were one or two plays away from being, you know, a double digit win team. You know, it felt like they were right in every single game and then just lost in the last second because of something kind of dumb. So, yeah, they are not right. necessarily their record. At the same time, they still lost the games. <laughs> so if 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 you want to get into the playoffs then you win the game you don't get to lose and still get a playoff spot that's just my right. opinion all right yeah okay so you wanted to get to antoine's tweets here yeah this is great he <laughs> says can you imagine a big brand getting relegated to a bottom tier league for a few years <laughs> the teasing would be unmerciful oh yeah i can only yes. imagine Oh, I can hear the, I can hear the, and he meant to say chant. I can hear the chant now, relegation, relegation. The TV views would be big. Oh, yeah. Could you imagine yeah. if Ohio State went to tier three? Yeah. With Eastern Michigan and. Well, you can almost guarantee going back off of that chart there, uh, Indiana, Rutgers, Purdue, Rutgers. Uh, they would all get, they would all get down. They would, down yeah, that would be awful. Yeah. And then uh, he says, I would definitely watch the team on the relegation bubble. <laughs> oh, heck yeah. yeah. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> well, you know what would happen too. I mean, depending on how they take it, those games could get absolutely brutal because they've got nothing to lose. Yes. And they've got nothing to lose and they've got the chance to go up a tier to make. So yep. think about it. Like if they had the three tiers and each tier makes more money because obviously the networks want the better tiers, but they're still going to show football. I mean, everybody watches right. football, but if you make more money from the top tiers, each team is going to want to get into those tiers. And then if they start making that money, yep. it starts leveling the playing field a little bit. I mean, just imagine what if, what if like a, a Western Michigan versus Ohio state game actually mattered because Western Michigan, even if, if they played close, or something like that, or if they looked yep. relatively good. No, that's yeah. a stupid example. What if I, okay, the Western, <laughs> the Western Michigan, Eastern Michigan game. If Western, yeah, Antoine, you're totally right. You see my vision, madness, and genius. Yes, we totally get it. You're, you're a freaking genius, dude. But like, if, I, I, yeah, what is this? I okay, think, so he says I think they should have a pod system and group them up depending on their power ranking. And the championship champions of each pod play each other in a championship game, sort of like how basketball does. Yeah, okay, I hear it. <laughs> and then he finished up with, and every year you can change up the schedule depending on how they did the previous years, so you can go into a different pod with a different schedule every year. Yeah. Oh, that would be fun. <laughs> that would be interesting. You would make a lot of money in TV views off the bottom teams. That's in danger too. Yep. Yeah. Freaking, well, yeah. I mean, you have this sort of, at that point you have this sort of, what do you want to call it? Like a mud league or something. Yeah. Where they're just, it's no holds barred and they don't care if they get penalized or what, because it's, <laughs> you know, we're, we're just fighting for our lives here. 
Well, just imagine, like, what if the Western Michigan, Eastern Michigan game actually mattered because the winner goes up to tier two? Yeah. That'd be really cool. Like, that yep. would actually, that would instantly give some of these really low, uh, low caliber games some meaning. Right. That'd be, that would be awesome. Well, and then you get a chance, like, for, for an Eastern Michigan in that case, I mean, they could, they could give it all they've got to get into the top tier for even just one year. Yeah. And they would have all kinds of recognition, national recognition, Eastern Michigan, you know, the little school from Michigan uh, gets into the top tier and, and everybody's talking about them and they get all that notoriety. And then you have kids from all over the country saying, oh, maybe I should go to Eastern Michigan because that's why they do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they use the football programs to highlight the schools to get students. Yes. So all of a sudden you have this massive influx of students into Eastern and then, you know, the team falls apart. They, they're, they're gone out of that top pod for a while. But it doesn't matter. They did what they needed to do. They, they spent their multi-million dollar budget on their NFL or their, on their Super Bowl ad, essentially, and got the result. And now they're back to, okay, we've got all the students we need. <laughs> yeah, but then if, if Eastern or Western somehow made it into tier one, then all of a sudden their recruiting can jump up too, because then the recruits, mm -hmm. the better recruits are even looking at them like, okay, well, Alabama had a bad season and fell down to tier two. Western Michigan had a good season and somehow managed to get up into tier one. So they have a better chance at a national title than Alabama actually does in their first year. Yep. So that, that might be a pipe dream. <laughs> That might be a pipe dream. I'm just thinking because that it would might be, be, but it would be a lot of fun. That would be sweet. <laughs> Sam Hartman's looking downfield for Adrian. Oh! Carter almost has a one-handed catch. Almost.